I recently took delivery of this Hornby Double O tank engine in the Apple Green LNER livery. Uh, very pleased with it. The uh, condition for its age is very, very good. Um, this would have been made in the late 1940s or early 1950s. The loco itself uh, had the motor with the horseshoe magnet so uh, I've been looking on YouTube and I've been looking at the uh, the films done by Ronald Dodd and uh, I liked what he'd done with the uh, the neo magnets with the horseshoe motor on one of these so let's have a look and see what uh, what the results were the motor is meant to run at 0.6 of an amp maximum I've set the multimeter up so we can see the amps that the motor's drawing from the controller. The controller's a gauge master model Q. So remember 0.6 of an amp is the the maximum. So that's just creeping off at about 0.46 of an amp. I'll bring it back the other way. It will of course go faster than that. Turn it to a higher speed, we can see what the reading gives. Let's bring it back. When I'm happy with my locos to have them trundling around at a fairly realistic speed, so I like them to uh, be able to creep along. I'll probably go no faster than that. And one of the interesting things is that you can change the power of the magnet to reduce the amps that's been pulled by the motor. And I watched a Ronald Dodd video where he added small neo magnets to the outside of the horseshoe because the magnet he got on his tank engine was very, very weak and apparently the horseshoe magnets are like that um, just the way they were manufactured at the time that was the technology they were using so we just pop a couple of neo magnets on either side of the horseshoe motor and see what happens got the neo magnets already prepared so you can see the magnets on this uh, this piece of wood and it's a small magnet it's a six millimeter cube and then for the the other side of the horseshoe magnet there's the magnet here which I've uh, I've marked with a red dot so you just need to make sure you check the poles on the magnet and make sure that they equate to the poles on the horseshoe magnet on the motor So they're fitted either side of the horseshoe motor. I mean, if you, I, I mean, I'm not intending to leave these on permanently, but if you were going to increase the magnetic strength of the horseshoe magnet, then you'd move them round to the back of the horseshoe and carefully line them up so they weren't touching the armature, and then you'd refit the the body shell and you'd run the loco like that. It's not my intention to do that. I don't really want to. Uh, detract from the originality of this but what I may do when things calm down a little bit is get the uh, get the horseshoe magnet remagnetized to give it a little bit more power okay let's have a look let's have see how the uh, the readings are on the multimeter
So you can see the multimeter readings are reduced by fitting the neo magnets to the horseshoe motor to improve its magnetism. Hornby double O did change from the horseshoe magnet to the block magnet. You can see there's one fitted in here at the back here where my finger's pointing. Uh, this one was remagnetized well, probably about 18 months, two years ago. So we'll just see how this uh, this tank engine runs with the Alnico magnet that replaced the earlier horseshoe magnet fitted to these little uh, tank engines. The block magnet motors were meant to run at no more than 0.65 of an amp and that LMS tank engine runs well within tolerance. You can uh, get a nice slow steady speed from it and it's not drawing a great deal. Let's have a look. Because the cap just appeared. So that pulls off nice and steadily at around about 0.28 of an amp. And if I bring that back, you can see that's running very smoothly and the motor's in good condition. bring that back that shows what the standard block magnet performs like when fitted to the tank engine What I've noticed from the area over here is that there's quite a lot of resonance from the baseboard. So I've done some close-up shots of the locos on the level crossing and coming out of the tunnel. I think the reason for the resonance is the uh, actual uh, baseboard being laid on top of a large table. So you've got like a gap between the top of the baseboard and the top of the table and that acts like a sounding box. So I've done the close-up shot so you get a better idea of what the motors sound like.